This is a wardrobe design I would like to build soon. The entire wardrobe consists of five modules and each single module is made up of three smaller modules. The first two modules on the left consist of a lower module for hangers and two upper modules for clothes. The width of each module is 620 mm allowing for two t-shirts or towels or bedding to be placed inside side by side. Unfortunately the maximum allowable depth of the wardrobe on the left side is 500 mm which will be quite a challenge to position the hangers in a way that allows for hanging clothes. On the right side the depth of the module could be as much as 700 mm. I could make the first module on the right in line with the others which would make it look better and prevent it from protruding. However I am quite particular about this specific size as I plan to store a folding workbench inside which is approximately 700 mm wide and about 1100 mm high. Additionally there is space for a 5J hammer drill for drilling holes for plugs in reinforced concrete load bearing walls. Unfortunately the first module on the right will be located under a window and central heating pipes run downstairs, so it might be difficult to open the bottom module front normally at this depth due to the radiator. Therefore I will likely devise a way to attach the front using hooks or magnets. This will allow the front to be removed upwards only from the bottom of the right wardrobe module. This should maintain the dimensions and allow the wardrobe to be covered with the front. I use external fronts in most wardrobes due to the ease of hinge installation and the availability of inexpensive soft close hinges. Of course all the modules will be screwed together and the upper modules will be placed with dowels without glue just to prevent slippage. I designed the irregular wall using part design objects simply drawing each irregular shape as a pad one on top of the other. To prevent the this wall from appearing in the cut list I added a bomb attribute to each pad object. As you can see the back of the wall is slightly angled and there are pipes in the lower right corner. I placed each completed wardrobe module in a link group container. It also looks much better and for more complex projects allows for managing everything within a single file. Also, this allows me to show or hide each module allowing me to design a different version of the module in the same part. I also added dimensions for some empty spaces which are primarily helpful in design but are not needed in the cut list and are best disabled when generating the cut list. It is possible I will decide to make the last module smaller and leave space to open front and place workbench somewhere else or next to it. In FreeCAD one of the main problems that has remained unresolved since its inception is the lack of access to the global position of an object. Recently I added a function for calculating global positions for containers based on their contents which has allowed me to reach a higher level of furniture design. 
It is now possible to easily copy entire link group and part containers and automatically position them using the Magic Move tool. Positioning entire link group and part containers using other tools is not yet supported, but I believe that thanks to the ability to determine global positions for containers this capability will soon be added. To copy an entire module you need to select the entire link group container in the Magic Move tool. When copying it is important to remember that clones are sensitive to object visibility. Therefore if you want to clone an entire container which is the default setting you need to have all elements visible that can affect the position of the container. For example external fronts need to be shown so that the global position of the container includes the front. When creating links to link group containers this is not a problem. You can hide elements in the link group container and the link will still be created in the correct location. However, it is better to use clones because they allow for measurement. In the case of links, each element selection refers to the same base element, so there is currently no way to determine the distance between an element in the base link group container and the element in its link. I usually design each wardrobe module in a separate file then generate a cut list for that individual wardrobe module and then order the boards and build the module in real life. This approach allows me to build the entire wardrobe from modules one by one. I can spread out the work in my free time avoid having to transport a large number of boards at once store them all and manage everything more easily in a small space. This time however I decided to design the entire wardrobe in a single file because I am not yet sure how the entire wardrobe should look and it also needs to be built with unusual dimensions and in in. Designing in a single file usually leads to a lot of chaos when it comes to creating cut list at the end, especially when there are multiple versions of the same modules in one file. I recently added new visibility option for top level containers that makes it easier to hide entire top level link group containers from the cut list. This allows you to generate a cut list for just one specific cabinet module. Personally I recommend creating two types of reports. The N list will be used to verify all components. The Q list will be the list for ordering boards from a board cutting service. As you can see you can also create an entire cabinet in a single file eliminating the need to use the assembly workbench, multiple files or spreadsheets. Thank you for watching.